to start. Okay, cool. Um, should I do the introduction this time? I think. Okay, I'll do it. Um, so hello everyone. So um, welcome to another session of the One World Probability Seminar. Today we have a huge, a huge pleasure to um, have Jean-François Delamas and Michel Nassi first speakers. Uh, so Jean-François will give the first talk on the local chain of large beyond the mega out and walls and trees and the brown and continuum trees. Um, over to you, Jean-François. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. So um, we... Uh, oh, okay. Ah, okay, just to, to fix things. Okay, so I will present uh, some uh, a kind of survey on the Bien-Aimé Galton Watson trees conditioned to be uh, large. And uh, we will see uh, all the different possibilities and, uh, in a sense, some universality of the, of the limit in some cases. And then we will go to the continuum analog of the Guinea Galton Watson trees, which are the uh, Levy continuum trees, and we will give a focus on the on the Brownian case. Okay, so this is a joint work with uh, Romain Abraham and uh, also with uh, Boazis, Guore, and, and uh, Nassif. Okay, so uh, first of all, I'm going to consider uh, a set of uh, words uh, where uh, indices by the positive integers, and I will consider a, a rooted uh, ordered tree, which is a, a, sub a subset of such uh, words with a few rules. Uh, the first one is that the, the root, the root belongs to the tree. And for every element of the tree, which I can write of the form ui, then the ancestor u belongs to the tree, and the younger brother uj belongs to the tree for j between 1 and 8. Okay. And what will be of interest is the out degree of each vertex of the tree, which I'll denote of ku of t, which is the out degree of the vertex u in the tree t. And I will take the convention that if u doesn't belong to the tree, then uh, the out degree is equal to minus one. And eventually, maybe the generation of the eight of a vertex is exactly its, uh, its length. So let us uh, give a picture. So here we have, uh, in fact, a binary tree with the root here and the two children. Uh, if you look at the vertex here, of course, uh, there is uh, two children, which is written here. And the eight of this individual V is exactly equal to one because this is a third generation. OK, the total size of the tree is it's cardinal. So in this case, if I didn't make a mistake, it is exactly 11. The eight of the tree is the number of generation. So here uh, we have generation zero, one, two, generation three, and generation four. So the eight is equal to four. The number of leaves, this is the, the vertices uh, with uh, out, degree, out degree equal to zero. So they are here. And this is exactly six. And I will also use the truncation of the tree so if I take h equal to uh, 3, the truncated tree is exactly equal to this subtree here. OK, so this is the, the kind of uh, uh, notation I'm going to use uh, during the first part of the, of the talk. So we want to look at uh, local limit for a sequence of uh, trees. We will say that they converge locally. Oh, sorry. They converge locally towards a, a limiting tree 
if the degree of uh, if the degrees are converging for all the possible uh, word uh, u. So of course it's interesting only for the elements u which belongs to the tree. Okay, so this is the local convergence. We are looking at the convergence of the degree of each vertices. And we say that the sequence of random trees is also locally converging in low toward the limit if the sequence of degrees is converging in distribution for the finite dimension distribution. We will be interested in the locally finite set uh, trees, sorry, which are trees for which all the vertices have a uh, finite degree. And in this case, it is very easy to uh, characterize the local convergence of random tree, provided that the limit is locally finite. In, that, in this case, the convergence in distribution, the local convergence in distribution, if the limit is uh, locally finite, you just have to look at the uh, truncated uh, random tree, and you assume that they uh, are going to converge. Uh, so this is a discrete random variable, and to converge in distribution, it's enough that the probability for them equal to t is going to converge. So it's very easy to, to check the local convergence for uh, random tree. And the particular case of random thing we are going to consider is the so-called uh, VNMA Galton Watson trees, where we have an offspring probability distribution, P, on the integers, on the non-negative integers, which is in fact the we have a, a random number, each individual has a random number of children. Independent random number of children, okay, which is distributed according to P. Okay, we assume that this uh, distribution, offspring distribution P is not uh, degenerated, which means that uh, it is not concentrated on zero and one. So uh, we really have uh, a non trivial tree. And by the way, I will also use the notation that P of A, this is the sum of uh, all the probability PK for K belongs to A, which is exactly the probability for uh, uh, the number of children of an individual to be uh, to lie in the set A. We shall assume that the Austin distribution has a finite mean, the mean being given by this quantity, of course. And what is uh, what is important in, for the result we are going to present is that we, we don't need uh, any other moment conditions. However, this, uh, the other moment conditions are usually appears in the, in the literature, but in fact, one can get rid of them and get uh, uh, the result in full generality. So finite mean, no other moment conditions. And then we can uh, give the distribution of the BNMA Galton Watson tree, which is a random tree, locally finite. Okay, and if we look at the probability for the for the restriction of the Galton Watson tree to be equal to a given uh, uh, finite tree T, this is exactly equal to the probability for each vertices to have exactly it's, uh, it's uh, the number of children, children given by its uh, out degree. Okay, so this is the usual formula for the Galton Watson trees. Okay, and uh, this uh, Galton, Watson, BNMA Galton Watson trees have a long history going back to the 18th, uh, 19th century. Okay. So the model is elementary, and this is uh, usually they appear in the second course of probability. Okay, so now we are going to uh, 
consider a typical conditioning for the Guinea Galton Watson tree, and we, are, we want them to be large. So there are many ways to, to consider uh, such conditioning event. And one is given, for example, by considering the, the, popula the population size process, also, also the Galton Watson process, where uh, the at level H of T, the size of the population at level H of the treaty is exactly the number of uh, vertices which are at level H. Okay, and uh, Z of two is the so-called uh, Galton-Watson process associated to the Galton-Watson. And for uh, example of large trees we are going to consider, there are many, we will see many examples. One of them is, for example, to ask the tree to, uh, to be alive at level N, which is exactly to assume that this H is H is larger than N. Or we can also ask for the size of the population at uh, generation N to be equal to a given number, say A of, a of H. And then we consider the, a sequence A of H. We shall assume in what follows that the probability for the Galton Watson tree to belong in this uh, uh, set EN is strictly positive. Okay, and uh, we shall consider the random tree tau of N, which is distributed as the initial Galton Watson tree, conditioning on being in the set E of N. Okay, and what we are going to look at is the existence and representation for the local limit, if it exists, of the sequence to of N. One interesting question is, why are we going to consider uh, the trees instead of the size population process? The answer is that if you look at the trees, you can observe uh, vertices with infinite degree, whereas for the population process, this would correspond to a, a blowing up of the exploration process, and then you get no more information on what happens. So in a sense, the trees has a finer description of the Galton Watson process than the Bienemy Galton Watson process. Okay. okay, so first we consider the, the critical, critical case. We take a Galton Watson tree with an offspring distribution P with mean mu equal to one. And then we shall consider the height of the tree, which is finite in the critical case, as the, uh, and the random tree is itself finite, so locally finite. And we shall consider the tree conditioned to be alive up to level n, up to generation n, which is equivalent to say that the, the size of the population at time n is strictly positive. And then it is well known and goes back to Kesten in 86 that there is a local limit of the, of the tree, of the Galton Watson tree, conditioned to be alive up to, up to level n. And the limiting tree is what I call the, the Kesten tree, which can be seen as a two type uh, Geneme Galton Watson tree, where uh, you have two vertices two kinds of vertices, one of type S for survivor and one of type E for extinction. And then the root is of type S. And the children of type S has a certain number of children. All of them are of type E, except for one, which is of type S, and which is chosen among, uh, among its children at random, uniformly at random. And the probability distribution of the number of children of the individual of type S is exactly given by the size by its distribution. Okay. 
okay? And then all the children of type E have a children of type E with the initial uh, offspring distribution. In a sense, the question tree is an infinite spine which is decorated with independent independently independent identically distributed uh, galton watson tree with the initial distribution of the of the galton watson tree. okay so um, sorry. now let us consider uh, always uh, still the critical case so the mean is equal to one but now we consider other conditioning events so instead of considering what we considered the previous slice was that the eight was equal or larger than n. But in fact, we can also consider the case where the eight is exactly equal to n. We can also consider the cardinal of the tree exactly equal to, uh, to n, or the maximal out degree equal to n, or the number of leaves equal to n, or even a little bit more uh, involved, the, you, want, you want to consider the number of vertices such that the degree belongs to a given set, A. Okay, so here, this is exactly the number of vertices, the number of individuals whose number of children lies in the set A. Okay, so this is L of A. Or for, for example, if you look at L of the set zero, this is exactly the number of leads. So this is L of T in the, in the previous notation. Okay, we can, so this is this case. So this is a little bit more complicated, or if you consider uh, than the previous, and of course, if you consider uh, for the set A, the, all the positive, all the non-negative integers, then you get exactly the total size of T. Okay, so you have the two particular case. There are also uh, also other quantities such as the orson schaller number. I will not describe it here, but uh, the results still hold for this kind of quantity. And we can also consider the diameter the diameter of the galton watson tree. Taking any of this kind of events, we get that conditioning, sorry, conditioning the galton watson trees to lie in such a set En, when S goes to infinity, we always get the same, the same uh, limit, which is the case tree. Okay, so we have it's in a sense, the case entry is the natural limit for a BNME Galton Watson tree, a critical BNME Galton Watson tree to be large. Okay. So, of course, uh, some of those results were already known, and uh, some of them are due to uh, other uh, authors. I'm, I'm not going to cite all of them because I will uh, forget someone. So, uh, Okay, now let us go to another uh, case, the subcritical case, which means we are going to look at the mean of the offspring distribution to be less than one. And we want to consider the, uh, the, the, the set of trees such that the number of, the, the number of vertices with number of children lies in the set A is equal to N. So let me recall. A of T is exactly the number of vertices such that the number of children of those vertices lie in the set in the set. Okay. And then we want to uh, consider the subcritical uh, trees conditioned to lie in this uh, set EN. Sorry, what is CA of T? 
Oh, I'm, I'm coming back. I can coming back. Don't worry. So I want to consider this, the, the Galton Watson tree, the condition Galton Watson tree, and look at the limit. Now, in order to describe the limit, which in this case is still the question tree, I need to, to work a little bit. So for this reason, I introduce a family of uh, distribution, P indexed by the set A I'm considering here, and a parameter theta. The, this kind of uh, distribution is exactly equal to the initial offspring distribution, but for the, the weight here, the exponential weight of the form theta to the power k minus one. So this is when k is not in A, and when k is in A, I put a weight equal to theta to the power k. And then, as you say, there is this quantity here, which is a normalizing constant. So this is the normalization. Okay, so uh, it's not always possible to get a probability distribution for a given theta. So there is a set of admissible theta. Okay, so. So if you think a little bit, it's not possible to always find a, a constant C here, such that PA theta is a probability distribution. Okay, so we shall only consider the case, the theta for which this is the case. Of course, theta equal one is uh, is working. Okay, so you have uh, so you have uh, one belongs to one is admissible, of course. And what happens, the interesting result is that all the trees, all the Ganymede galton watson trees with this distribution here, conditionally on this event EN, conditionally to belong on this event EN, have the same distribution. Okay, so this is a interesting result. And then we have two cases. Either there is a a parameter theta for which the distribution PA theta is critical, or this is not the case. In the first case, we say that P is generic for the set A. In this case, we have the limit here where tau zero is a case entry associated to this critical distribution. Okay. So what happens if we are not generic? Then let me recall subcritical case. And now we assume that P is non-generic. Then the maximum of the admissible uh, parameter theta is again admissible. And the distribution here is also subcritical. And then the limit of the galton watson trees condition to lies in the set EN is also going to converge to a test entry associated to this uh, probability distribution. However, the reproduction of the survivor in this case has still the same distribution, P prime, but P prime is in a sense defective. So, in order to have a probability distribution on, uh, uh, we have to complete and uh, tell that the probability to uh, have an infinite number of children is exactly equal to one minus the mean of P star, which is strictly positive. So in this case, it may happen that the survivor, the, 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 the an, a, ver a vertex of type S has infinitely many children, which correspond to the condensation. And in this case, all the children are of type E. So if I give a description, we have the root, which is of, of type uh, S, which has a certain, always one, at least 
one children of type S, then it may have other children, all of them distributed according to the initial Galton Watson tree. And then this one may have an infinitely number of children. And so the limiting tree has this kind of check. So uh, distinguished finite spine of eight given by a, a distributed according to a geometric distribution with parameter this quantity. At the tip of this distinguished spine, we have an infinite number of independent Galton Watson trees, and the spine is itself decorated with Galton Watson trees. So this corresponds to the non genetic The generic case, I will write here. What do we have? We have the root, which is still of type, so of type S, and then we have an infinite spine. And as always, the spine is decorated with Galton Watson. Okay, so we have the two differences between the generic case and the non-generic case. Okay, the non-generic case was uh, studied first by uh, Johnson and Stephenson, and then by Janssen in the particular case where the we are looking at the total size of the population. But in fact, the result extends to uh, uh, all the subsets. Then it's interesting to, to understand uh, what is uh, between uh, generic and non-generic case. So let me remind you, we have a subcritical of string distribution. We consider a set A with positive probability. And if theta is admissible, we have this probability, the existence of this probability, which is with uh, exponential weight, theta to the power k minus one here, theta to the power k here with a normalization here. Okay. If p is generic, then there is a, a parameter theta for which the, this probability is critical. If it is non-generic, non-generic is Otherwise, it is non-generic otherwise. So let, uh, let me uh, make some uh, remarks. Maybe if uh, we consider uh, two sub subset of N, disjoint subset of N uh, with positive probability, if P is generic for A and B, then it is also generic for the union. If it is non-generic for A and B, it is also non-generic for the union. If P is generic for the set reduced to zero, then it is generic for all the subset of N. However, there are examples where P is non-generic for the subset reduced to zero, but generic for N. So for example, in this latter case, conditioning on the number of leaves to be large, we get a condensation phenomenon. That, that is, there is at the limit, there is a degree of uh, there is a vertex with an infinite degree. However, if you condition with respect to the total size, you get the question tree, the infinite spine, and all the degrees are finite. Okay, so we see we have very different picture in this sub subcritical case. If you can, if you take the condition with respect to the total size or the number of leaves, okay, it's a little bit more complicated than the critical case. Okay. So, what is admissible theta? What theta is admissible? Ah, uh, well, you have to check that uh, for each case, you have to consider uh, 
this formula here and ask yourself if this constant here is finite, is well defined. So uh, if you look at the formula, I think uh, you want that the sum of k not belonging to a of theta k minus one pk plus the constant here times the sum of a k in a of theta to the power k, k is equal to one. Okay, so of course you need this quantity here to be finite, this quantity here to be finite, and both of them, the, the, uh, and uh, this one to be less than one. And this is the condition for theta to be, uh, to be admissible. Is this okay? Thank you. Okay. So any theta, any theta uh, is admissible. Uh, any theta, is, is, is it, any theta less than one is admissible. So uh, hmm. if, uh, for example, the, the the generating function of p at uh, theta is uh, finite, is less than one, then uh, theta is admissible. And uh, if not, you need the uh, this quantity, as I said, to be less than uh, one. Okay, and uh, this quantity to be finite. Okay. Mm. So this is a condition to have uh, theta admissible. Okay. Well, P of P of P of K is, is the probability distribution. Yes, P of yes. K is probability. Yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. P of K is the distribution. But what you are considering is that uh, for theta large, for theta uh, uh, greater than one. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, of course, you have. Uh, I should have said that uh, you have. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Of course, you have uh, zero, one, which are admissible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, what you want is that uh, this quantity to be critical, and if you are uh, in this set, all the for all theta in this set, the the corresponding distribution is uh, subcritical. In in fact, the mean is increasing with theta. So what happens is not. On this set, what happens is either you find something which is critical, either you take the maximum of the admissible uh, uh, parameters. Mm. Okay. Okay. And sorry for the uh, uh, non-generic case, uh, the 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 G is finite. Uh, what you can you again show, show what is non-generic case? Uh, non generic, non generic uh, case. It is for more. example, for example, if uh, example, uh, sorry, example, assume that the sum of theta k pk is equal to plus infinity for all theta strictly larger than one, mm -hmm. then uh, this condition. Or this condition, one of them is not satisfied. At mm -hmm. least, okay. So in this case, uh, all the sets are uh, non-generic. Mm -hmm. non oh, okay. Can you show once more what is the theorem for the non-generic case? What are the three uh, limit ah, three? The three. Yes. yes, it is infinite tree. Tau zero is infinite tree. Yes, yes. Tau zero is an infinite tree because this vertices here, this vertex, has an infinite uh, number of children. Mm. Okay, so uh -huh. you have here a lot of 
of uh, Galton Watson trees, which are grafted on this uh, on this uh, individual here. In the generic case, you get the usual Kesten tree, which is an infinite spine, a decorated mm. an infinite spine mm. which is decorated with Galton with uh -huh. independent Galton Watson tree. In the uh -huh. generic case, you get a finite spine mm. decorated with uh, independent Galton Watson tree, and the last vertex here has mm. an infinite number of uh, of uh, Galton Watson tree, which are which are oh. attached to it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now let us go uh, to the supercritical case, and uh, we shall uh, consider a, consider a different uh, kind of uh, conditioning, which is we want to condition the population population size at time n to be equal to a of n for a sequence, for a positive sequence, A of n. So we consider subcritical case. The mean is strictly, strictly larger than one. Let me recall that there is a sequence Cn such that the renormalization of the population size process converge almost surely to a random variable, which is exactly equal to zero only on the extinction extinction event in the case in the case where there is a so-called l log l condition one can take for the for the quantity cn the the mean to the power n but uh, this l log l condition is not uh, needed to to get the result i'm going to present now i need to introduce two quantity which is the infimum of the support of the offspring distribution and the supremum of the offspring of the support of the offspring distribution, which can be equal to plus infinity. Okay, this is, this is uh, 10 plus infinity. Okay. Then we have to consider the sequence a, a, a n, the speed of uh, convergence, the speed of uh, explosion of the sequence a n with respect to the sequence c of n. So, if the limit, I shall assume that the limit exists and call it theta. So, if theta is equal to, if theta is finite, then we always have the local convergence here towards a limit, a limiting tree. Tau of theta. If the limit theta is equal to zero, then T of zero is again the case entry. If A is equal to zero, that is, uh, if the probability of extinction is strictly positive. Or exactly the A are tree if A is strictly positive. So the A are three is, uh, uh, for example, if A is equal to three, the A are three, all the individuals have three children. Okay. If theta is strictly positive and finite, then the tree T of theta is also an in, a, a decorated infinite back, backbone and this is distributed as the initial Galton Watson tree conditional on the limiting uh, random variable W. However, the infinite backbone is in this case not a branching process. If theta is equal to plus infinity, then we have only a partial limit. In the case where the support of the offspring distribution is finite, then the limiting tree is exactly the B R tree. If P is geometric, then the the tree t to infinite exists and exhibit the condensation at the root. So we have different uh, uh, results here, description here. Okay. Maybe I will present the, uh, very quickly the, the kind of uh, result we used for the proof. What we use is that we use the preci precise asymptotics of the probability for the Galton Watson process to be equal to, to a given constant here. Yeah. And we give the preci precise asymptotic when n goes to infinity for 
H and K given. And of course, in case theta is strictly positive and finite, let's go back to the result of Dubuc and Seneta in uh, 76. However, for theta is equal to zero, this is a little bit more involved. And this is result from uh, Fleischmann and Bachtel in 2007 and 2009. And one has to uh, decompose according to the Schroeder case, A is less than one or A is equal to two. And in those cases, let us say that this quantity has not, uh, is oscillating at the limit. So, The, the, it's very it's uh, very involved to get the it's involved to get the, the asymptotics of, or the behavior of this quantity. Now, of course, we could uh, use the same computation, uh, the same conditioning for the subcritical case, and uh, this is easy if one can uh, see the subcritical tree as a supercritical uh, tree conditioned to the extinction. Sorry, can you show once more what is A and B gothic gothic uh, letters A and B? What ah, is it? Okay, so let me recall what I it was on the previous slide. It A was before, yes. A and B is in the infimum of the support of P, and B is the supremum of the support of the string distribution. Supremum of what? What does it mean? Ah, so, so the, ah. Support. Mm -hmm. The support, yes. Support, okay, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, uh, maybe I will go to the, to the next slide. Oh, okay. Um, hmm. Okay, so now I, I, I would like to present some recent results on the, on the same kind of conditioning for the Brownian CRT. So, let me just recall that the uh, We are looking at the, fine, uh, the critical case and with uh, finite variance. And then the Galton Watson tree condition to be large, <clears throat> in a sense, converts to the so called uh, Brownian uh, continuum random tree. So this is a, a scaling limit of the Galton Watson tree with, by, uh, with a scaling on the graph distance. So this is a convergence of metric space. And when one condition on the total size to be uh, equal to n. So this is related to the Brownian excursion. So maybe if you allow me, I will, be, uh, I will go a little bit faster on this uh, section. And uh, <clears throat> so only uh, speak the two to five minutes left to uh, people who already know about the, the Brownian continuum random tree. So a bit sorry. So this is built, it can be built through the Brownian excursion using this kind of distance. Okay, and so let us say that the, the eight of the tree is given by the supremum of the Brownian excursion. Okay, so let us, let us present maybe the, the, size of the, the, the size of the population at time t is given by the process <coughs> by the continuous state branching process, Z of T, which is a failure diffusion because we are looking at the Brownian continuum random tree. <coughs> so I wrote here the, the SDE of the failure diffusion. And now we are going to consider the CRT condition to be of eight exactly equal to H. Okay, and again, we observe a, a local limit which can be described as a Kesten tree that is an infinite spine, spine decorated with uh, IID Brownian CRT, which are grafted at rate two. And in fact, if you look at the, uh, the tree here and the size of the population at level T, this is again a failure diffusion, but with a drift here. So can you show once for the definition of Brownian tree? To, to, before, it was just one, just um, one slide before. Definition yes. of Brownian tree, huh? Yes, but uh, if I... Uh, It's uh, equivalence, uh, it was, was some, some, non, non, some equivalence there was. Uh, yes. Before the local limit. Huh? Picture, if you take no, no. A, a Brownian excursion here and consider two, two individuals here, S and T, they will be in the tree represented by vertices leaves of the tree and they common 
Yes, and, and they, the common ancestor will be the minimum, will be at, at the eight of the, of the common ancestor, the root will be here, will be given by the minimum of the Brownian excursion between S and T. So this gives you the idea of how to build the, the Brownian CRT from the Brownian excursion. Uh, can, you, can you show really the, once more the previous slide? There was, there was a form ah, of Oh, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we want again to look at the local limit of the Bronian CRT. And I'm conditioning for the size of the population at level H to be exactly equal to A of H. And now we have three regimes. In the low regime, where A of T is uh, less than T square, we get the convergence towards the, the Brownian, the Kessen tree. So again, we have the Feller diffusion. More interesting is in the moderate regime, where theta t is of order t square, then we also get a limit, a yeah, local limit for the Brownian tree condition to have a, a size exactly equal to A of t at time t, which can be seen as a decorated backbone, okay, which is uh, decorated with IID Brownian CRT. And then the size of the tree the size of the population at time n, at time t, sorry, is again uh, described by the kind of failure diffusion plus this term here, which is a Poissonian immigration, which didn't appear in here. So from here to here, I had a drift. From here to here, I had a, a Poissonian uh, uh, contribution to the drift. Okay. So to conclude, on the open questions, maybe. So for the supercritical case, the I regime is still a, an open question. That is, A n is growing faster than the, than the mean to the power n. And it is conjecture, conjecture that the local limit has a condensation at the root, at least in certain, uh, in certain cases. For the critical case, it's open for all the regimes except for the geometric of speed distribution. For the supercritical case, this is open for all the regime, except when the Galton-Watson tree can be seen as a supercritical Galton-Watson tree condition on extinction. Now, for the Brownian CRT, conditioning on the size at time H, H to be equal to A of H, the subcritical and supercritical case are similar and we have a very close result. In a sense, this is a, in the same spirit as the geometric of string distribution in the, for the galton watson tree. So this is not really a surprise. And then considering more general continuum random tree, the so-called Levy tree is an open question. And maybe I wanted to, uh, to mention a, a work in progress about conditioning Levy trees to have at least one large vector. Okay, I will stop here and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, so first let's thank uh, Jean-François for his talk. And now we invite everybody to amuse themselves and give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so question time. Um, anybody from the audience has a question? Okay, um, so while waiting, people are probably thinking about questions. Um, so I have uh, have some simple ones. Um, so I'm trying to understand. Uh, so if we go back to the uh, the, the Galton Watson tree case, um, in the subcritical case, you said there is uh, this uh, distinction between the generic and non-generic case. And I'm trying to yes. understand so uh, why this difference arises. Um, was it because the um, the 
the something to do with the decay of the event you are conditioning on? Ah, so, uh, it's anyway you are conditioning by an event with probability decreasing to zero. So yeah. it's not really a surprise to get different uh, limit in a sense. Uh, but as I so um yeah okay I guess when you when and in subcritical they are all sub um, exponentially uh decay but right okay so it's in, it's in a sense what, really... what is surprising is that for the critical case everything boils yeah. down to the as a limit to the case entry. That's right. In a sense this is a unusual okay. case. Right. So in the critical case, there's no like counterexample, no no surprise at all. There's no. No, I mean. It, I mean, uh, in the sort of, is there possible to find a, um, a reasonable conditioning, where, you won't find the 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 cast entry in the end. Um, <laughs> we we. Uh, um, I don't know. I, uh, for example, if you look at the other event, uh, we were uh, we could consider, for example, the the conditioning to the uh, maximal uh, degree of the tree to be large. Yeah. I don't know what uh, what you get. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we we did only the study for. For this very uh, particular case of uh, of event here. Okay. So uh, it's not. I'm sorry not to be able to to answer. No, no, no just uh, just no, sir. Okay. So right. you can show once more. What is the last open question about uh, continuous trees? So uh, yes, living continuum condition to have at least large. Oh, this large. Last one. Uh, the this green, one? green, green, green. Ah, the green. So this is a work in progress with uh, ah. uh, Michel Nassif. And uh, what he has done is to uh, consider this. Uh, of course, the, the Brownian continuum uh, random tree is uh, the degree of each vertex can, a, can only be zero, one, uh, well, sorry, zero, one, two, or three. So th there is no no big uh, no big vertices, mm. and so uh. to have a, a large vertex, which means a, a large number of children, you need to to go to the to the extension of the Brownian continuum random tree to to the so-called Levy continuum random tree, where you have uh, large nodes, large vertices. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the, the description is, of course, uh, uh, more involved, and uh, it's uh, you have a nice description, for example, in the by uh, Thomas Duquen and Jean-François Legal in their in their book. In a sense, this is the, the scaling limit of uh, Galton Watson trees, where the offspring distribution lies in the in the stable in the attraction domain of the stable distribution. And what is the difference between, difference between Brownian continuous random tree and Levy continuous random tree? What is the difference? So I would say that in the Brownian continuum random tree, you have this kind of picture. Mm -hmm. And in the Levy tree, you have this kind of picture. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. OK, the vertices, mm -hmm. the vertices mm -hmm. here. Uh, the, this vertex has an infinite number of children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, you have only, uh, if this is a branching point, you have only two children. If this is not a branching point, you have only one children, one child. And if you are a leaf, you, you have no, no child at all. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, if you are a branching point, you have an infinite number of, of children. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So there is a question on the chat, I think. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, 
so the question I'm, I'm reading is that, uh, as I said in the first, for the Galton Watson trees, there's the not, we only assume that the mean is finite. So we don't assume any other moment. Uh, okay. Uh, for the uh, for the continuum trees, uh, of uh, it's uh, it's an open question. So we don't know. We don't know. I'm not sure if I am answering right the the, the question, mm -hmm. but uh, okay. Okay, thanks. Um, so I think we're wrong point right on time. Um, shall we just take a break of five minutes and then uh, we we'll see the second talk of Michelle? Okay. So you you keep you keep the the screen or I have to do something? No. Um I, I think out. you can I think you can stop sharing. Uh, yeah, okay. And then Michelle can, yeah, can share his. Uh, um, so I have a, another question. So I guess you can find uh, a normalizing sequence so that you take the garden horse and tree and then renormalizing that way and they'll give you the local limit of the Brownian tree. Would that be some, some I mean, means? The scaling of, limit of the. Yeah. Yes. Probably, yeah. Okay, and you can can you kind of, um, but what about the subcritical case? You can do that as well. Probably not. What What do you mean? You mean to? Um... So you take a subcritical garden was in tree. Yes. Um, you know, if you don't do any rescaling, you know the local limit is something. Um, in the continuum case, you have uh, sort of a burning CRT, but you, you can also take the local limit and that will be sort of the casting, continuum casting tree. Yes. Would that be possible to take a subcritical Dalton Wilson tree, risk it and get a casting, uh, continue uh, casting tree? Try to see if the, okay, the, mm. okay, the the picture is very similar. Yeah. Okay, and, and you you are asking if we can do that. Uh, yeah. In, in the exchange <laughs> the limits in the same sense. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know. In, okay. In, okay. It's uh, it's not clear. Um, it's not clear, for example, uh, if you uh, assume uh, the support of the offspring distribution to be uh, finite. Uh, okay. I mean, what are you looking at? Sorry, you are looking at the subcritical uh, subcritical case. Yeah, let's say subcritical. Yeah. I guess yeah. Uh, so uh, subcritical case, you are conditioning by the number of leaves or the total population. Okay, okay, this is the same for mm -hmm. the Brownian CRT. And yeah. then conditioning <coughs> by the number of vertices with a given out degree seems to be uh, uh, in, uh, in the Brownian case, there is no, no such condition. Mm. Okay, right. Okay. And, uh, and in the, yes. And in the Levy case, you would get also the same problem. So the, the, this kind of conditioning is not, uh, does not seem to be. Uh, uh, easy for the, for the continuum case. Okay, so in the continuum case, you're uh, conditioning on the local times. Right. Okay, I see. Okay. You, you can also condition on the eight. It gives you right, also yeah. the, the okay. same result. Mm. And conditioning on the eight, this is uh, this holds for the Brownian and Levy trees. And yeah. Okay. 
you, you can also uh, condition the diameter to be larger than, mm. than t. And yeah. T goes to zero. And uh, you should also, uh, I believe that the, the limit would be uh, the Kesten tree, the, the continuum Kesten tree. Yeah, the normal diameter is very, yeah. It's, oh, okay. That's, yeah. I don't know how to do that, but this, there should be mm. the analog of the discrete uh, case. Right. Okay. What what we are doing in the in the different regime here hein, is that we are asking for the, for example, in the in the I regime we are going we are asking for the tree to be larger, the random tree to be larger, much more larger than what it could be. Yeah. In the, okay. So. Um, Okay, right. Uh, I need to keep track of the time. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, Michelle, do you want to uh, share your screen? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, so I don't know how to. Ah, perfect. There you go. <laughs> Let me know when I could start, maybe. Okay, yeah. So, um, so you have welcome back, everybody. So, uh, so now we are going to listen to the second talk uh, today. So, this is going to be given by Michel Nassif, who's talking about additive functionals of large PGW trees and their connection with living trees. Yeah, thank you. So, hello, everyone. Um, and uh, first of all, I'd like to thank. Uh, the organizers for inviting me. Um, so today I, I'm going to present a uh, joint work with uh, Jean-Francois and uh, Romain Abraham uh, about uh, functionals on large Bien-Aimé uh, galton Watson trees and uh, their connection with Lavie trees. So as opposed maybe to, to Jean-Francois' talk, uh, we'll, be more, uh, we'll be dealing rather with the global structure of, of uh, the discrete trees rather than local limits. So we'll be looking at scaling limits rather. Uh, so first of all, maybe um, there you go. Uh, we'll start with some notations and it's basically the same notations as Jean-Francois. Uh, we'll be considering uh, finite rooted and ordered trees. Um, for any given vertex v in in, a, in the tree, I'll denote by t index uh, by t v the subtree above v, so consisting of the vertex v and all of its descendants. So highlighted here in red. And then uh, the cardinal of t is just its size, meaning the number of nodes. H of t is its size. So here we have a tree of height one, two, three, four. And uh, finally, T note uh, denotes the set of uh, internal vertices of T, meaning all the vertices that are not leaves. And we'll be needing that uh, later on. Um, so the framework we'll be looking at is uh, that of uh, conditioned Yanime Galton Watson trees. So here we are only looking at. Uh, conditioning by the size. So we are taking a Bianne Megalton Watson tree and we're conditioning, we're conditioning it to have exactly size n. So the number of vertices is n and we'll denote that, that by tau n. And uh, there are some uh, conditions on the offspring distribution uh, in order to have a scaling limit. Uh, so if, if it seems too technical, you can just uh, keep in mind that uh, you can just take uh, a critical offspring distribution with finite variance, but it, it works uh, more generally. You just need to assume that psi, uh, you, can, you always assume that the, the offspring distribution is critical. And 
So instead of having finite variance, you can make that more general and replace it with this condition on, on, on the offspring distribution. We, we ask that it uh, belongs to the domain of attraction of a stable distribution which just means that there is a normalizing sequence such that we have this kind of generalized uh, uh, central limit theorem where the limit is, it can be a Gaussian uh, random variable, but more generally it's a stable random variable with, uh, with uh, the parameter gamma here uh, lying between one and two. Um, Sorry, for gamma equal to two, it is a normal distribution or? Yes, exactly, uh, up, up to a normalizing constant. Mm -hmm. oh. um, so these are, and then there's a, a final third condition, uh, a technical one, and basically. So, sorry, yeah. just for, for the question before, if it is uh, the Gaussian should be a, I mean, so it is lambda square divided by two or something. Right. So there is, yes. I mean, okay, so there should be a con like exponential constant times lambda to the power two should work. Yes, so it's a normalizing constant. So it, it doesn't, okay. it's, not, it's not really, a, yeah, up to a constant, it's, it's gonna work the same. Okay. Okay. Um, Yeah, and, and then, so uh, belonging to the domain of attraction means that the sequence Bn will be of the form uh, uh, some slowly varying function times n to the power one over gamma. And here the, in the third condition, we just ask for this slowly varying function to be bounded. But again, if this, if this uh, seems too technical, you can just keep in mind uh, Xi is critical and has finite variance. I just wanted to, to show you that it, it works under more general conditions. Um, so uh, we'll be dealing with additive functionals. And what, so let me remind you what, what an additive functional is. Um, so maybe first of all, uh, for, for a finite tree T, I'll denote by uh, T1, T2, et cetera, T3, uh, the branches, which are the, the subtrees uh, starting from children of the root. So as pictured here, and we call a functional on the set of trees additive if it satisfies this recursion, which, which says that the functional of the tree is just the sum of the functional over the branches, the TIs, plus some, some, uh, some extra term, uh, which depends on the whole tree. And this function small f is called the tall function. Um, okay, and then uh, maybe immediately you can see that uh, an additive functional can also be written as this sum. So we're summing over all vertices of the tall function uh, taken at the subtree uh, above w. Okay. So why, why look at additive functionals? It's because it, it provides a, uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, indices or quantities of the trees that we'd like to look at that, that people study. And that can be expressed uh, in terms of additive functionals. So here I give some examples. Uh, the total path length, uh, which is given by the sum uh, over all vertices of the distance between the root and uh, on the vertex V. And uh, just using a, a, a Fubini theorem, you can rewrite it as this. And here you can see that it's a difference between two additive functional or well, an additive functional uh, minus the total size. Um, Sorry, uh, can you return to the definition of additive functional? Yeah, is, sure. it clear, is it really correct that additive functional before this page of, oh yes, is it correct that um, as a function is a sum of function of t, uh, uh, the uh, vertex t, yes? Root. I'm f, sorry? F, 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 a, a tall function depend on, depend on the, on, 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 on what, of the number of, number of, uh, uh, of, f, 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 f small depend on what? 
on the whole tree. It can be on anything. Whole tree. Yes. Oh. Well, uh, in, we, we, you, you'll see in the in the in the remainder of the talk. I'll, I'll have I'll take a specific kind of tall functions, but for for mm. the moment, it can be anything. Oh, anything. It can okay, depend on the whole tree. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let me go back. Uh, so another example is the Wiener index, which is the distance, uh, the sum of the distances between any two vertices. And again, you can write it as well, in terms of some additive functionals. And finally, uh, yeah, we have a Shao and Sokal's B1 index, uh, which is used uh, to, uh, yeah, to assess the balance of a phylogenetic tree. So it means that uh, it gives an idea of how balanced or, unba or, or unbalanced a tree is. And it, uh, it's expressed as the sum of the inverses of the heights right here. Um, so and, uh, so uh, to answer maybe your question, in all of these examples, the, uh, the tall function depends only on the size or the height. It's not a general function of the tree. And these will mainly be uh, our interest. Uh, so in, basically, instead of doing a case-by-case -case study, we'll look at a whole family of functionals, the additive functionals, uh, and we'll try to, to say something about their asymptotic behavior. So this is our goal, to, to study the asymptotic behavior of these kind of functionals. Uh, and specifically, we're interested in uh, the regime, the glo what's the so-called global regime, where uh, we have a scaling limit. So we'll be looking at scaling limits of these quantities. Uh, and uh, we have a simpler case where we're gonna be able to say a lot more, uh, which is a func functions, at all functions, which, can, uh, which are written in this form. So uh, a power of the, of, this, of the size times the power of the height. And in this case, we're gonna, be, uh, we're gonna have uh, stronger results. And as always, uh, tau n is uh, the size conditioned Ganymede Galton Mutton tree. Uh, okay, so this is our goal. And let me uh, mention a couple of, uh, of uh, results uh, from the literature on, uh, on this subject. Uh, so, Phil and Kapoor uh, first uh, studied uh, this, uh, this kind of problem. So, they, they looked at uh, tall functions depending only uh, which are depending only on the size, right? So it's just a power of the size. Uh, and they showed that uh, for the Catalan model, which is a specific uh, offspring distribution, the binary one, you have either a zero children or a two children with probability one half each. So this is a specific kind of uh, galton matsu so tree. Size is the number of vertices of the tree, yes? What yeah. is size? Yes? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so for this specific offspring distribution, they showed that there's a scaling limit of uh, this quantity with a normalizing factor here, uh, for only for alpha uh, greater than one half. Otherwise, there's a. I, I, I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, towards uh, some random variable uh, z alpha, which is characterized by its moments. And then they showed that actually if uh, there's a phase transition happening at alpha equals one half. So we get a different kind of regime if alpha is less than one half. And uh, okay, uh, the limiting, and then they uh, much more recently uh, in a preprint, uh, they generalized this result to, um, to offspring distributions, to critical offspring distributions with finite variance. So the finite variance uh, condition uh, still is still uh, un under this condition, the, under this finite variance condition, they show the same kind of results. Yeah. And they, uh, they were also, so Phil and Janssen uh, were also able to, to give a representation of the limit in terms of uh, the Brownian excursion. So there's a connection with the Brownian excursion. Uh, and uh, I'll explain why this, uh, why this, uh, uh, occurs. Um, and uh, finally, uh, for infinite, uh, in the case where the offspring distribution has infinite variance, uh, so uh, Jean Francois, together with Dersin and Siovo, uh, proved convergence for the same quantity 
but for alpha greater than one. And they conjectured the phase transition at alpha equals one over gamma. So this result is not optimal. And they conjectured that we can go uh, uh, all the way to one over gamma. So if you notice in these results, first of all, they all deal with the size. So the tall function is always, uh, depend, uh, is always some power of the size. And uh, they either assume uh, some um, a finite variance condition, in which case they are optimal, so the first two, or, uh, the, um, or they, um, uh, for infinite variance, in the infinite, in, in the infinite variance case, uh, they are not, uh, they are not optimal. So our, our goal will be to, to, uh, to in, in just one framework, uh, to, uh, to prove this result uh, and to, to actually to, to generalize it, as we'll see. Uh, so, um, as I mentioned, we, we, uh, we are looking at the global regime. Uh, so, uh, uh, like the, 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 under, the, the key ingredient will be the fact that uh, Ganymede Galton Watson trees uh, correctly normalized uh, converge in distribution to uh, the Brownian tree or more generally to the stable tree. Uh, so, uh, so let me start by uh, defining what a real tree is, which will be the limiting object of, uh, of uh, galton watson trees. So a real tree is just a complete metric space, uh, such, uh, satisfying these two conditions. The first one says that for any two points, there is uh, a unique geodesic going from X to Y. So a lot of spaces have satisfied the first condition. Think of, think for example, of R2. And we, we, we don't want to think of R2 as a real tree. So this is where the second condition comes in. And uh, it says that there's only one way to get from point X to point Y. So if we remove any intermediate point between X and Y, uh, they are no longer connected. So R2 will not satisfy this condition, typically. Okay, and uh, the real trees we consider are uh, just like the, the discrete trees will be equipped with a distinguished vertex called the root and uh, a finite measure. And then we'll denote uh, by blackboard T uh, the set of uh, real trees, uh, of measured real trees. Uh, and then, uh, uh, a practical way of uh, constructing a real tree, which uh, Jean-Francois uh, quickly mentioned at the end of his talk, is uh, by coding them uh, by excursion type functions. So we consider an excursion type function, G, which means that G is just, uh, it starts from zero, ends at zero, and it's positive in between. And then uh, the picture is as follows. It's, you, you take the graph of G, you, you put glue on the bottom, on the, at the, on the bottom, you fold it, you unfold it, and you see what you get. And what you get is the tree, uh, the real tree drawn in red, where you identify vertices that see each other, points that see each other on the graph of, of G. Okay, so this, is, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for it. Um, okay. Um, so this is a practical way to construct real trees. Um, and uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the, the following proposition. Uh, by doing this, you get a compact real tree. And moreover, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's a natural way of equipping it of equipping it with a probability measure by just taking the push forward of the Lebesgue measure on zero one. Okay, so it's an easy way to construct uh, measured real trees. Um, and so the, on, the key ingredient for, uh, for our results uh, is this uh, theorem, 
the, the scale of uh, giving the scaling limits of Ganymede Galton-Watson -Watson trees. And it says the following, uh, you assume that the offspring distribution is critical and that it lies in the domain of attraction of a stable distribution. And then uh, uh, the Ganymede Galton-Watson -Watson tree uh, correctly normalized will converge in distribution to uh, the stable Levy tree, which I will now describe. Uh, um, it's yeah. It's uh, so. First of all, this result is due to Aldous in the in the finite variance case, and you can in the general case. And uh, the limit is, uh, as I said, the stable Levy tree, which is uh, the real tree coded in the in the finite variance case, or for gamma equals two, it's coded by the Brownian excursion up to a again up to a. Um, a a constant. And in the general case, it's coded by uh, the so-called height process. I'm not going to get into the details, but it's, it's a process you can construct uh, from uh, starting from a, a, a Levy process with no negative jumps. And it was introduced by Le Gell and Lejean. So these, uh, these uh, the height process is an excursion type function and the tree as uh, you can code with it a tree and that's what we call the stable Levy tree. Uh, just what we're going to need about the, this tree is that, uh, so it can be seen as a random metric space, of course, and it, it's equipped with a distance, a root, a probability measure, which can be seen as the uniform measure on the set of leaves, and a sigma finite measure L, uh, which is called the length measure. And it can be seen as the, the equivalent of the Lebesgue measure, right? Because uh, the real tree is basically like uh, uh, the union of segments. And you can, you can it's possible to define uh, a Lebesgue measure on, on this kind of object. Um, okay, uh, so- well, what is Tn multiplied to Bn divided by n in the theorem. What is it? It, it means that, okay, so uh, tau n is a tree, so you can equip it with the graph distance. And here it just means that you normalize this distance to be equal to Bn over n. So you just multiply all distances by this factor. Mm. Uh, the function, okay, thank you. The coding function. Multiply no, the causal function. Mm -hmm. No, we, well, it's if if you look at it in terms of trees, it just means that instead uh, that you multiply all distances by this factor here, right? Ah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. yeah, the, this this is a metric space uh, equipped with uh, not the graph distance, but the graph distance normalized by this. Mm. Mm. Thank you. You just rescale everything. Um, so uh, with with this with the last result, uh, you can immediately uh, get uh, you can immediately say something about uh, additive functionals in a in a nice uh, for nice tall functions at least. So this is uh, the first result. Uh, so as always, we assume that psi is critical and in the domain of attraction of a stable distribution, and then uh, you have this convergence right here. So we, we're looking at the sum over um, normalized by this uh, factor, right? The, the size of, uh, of tau n w of some function which depends on the tree correctly normalized. And also it can depend on the height of the vertex w which we are considering. And this will converge to uh, some limiting object which depends on the stable tree. Uh, and this convergence holds uh, for, uh, for continuous and bounded functions. So for nice enough functions, you can get this kind of result. Of result. Uh, and uh, let me just say yeah, uh, that um, uh, this is actually a statement uh, about random measures, right? Because if you look at the right, uh, left-hand side and let a vary, this defines uh, some random measure. And we're, we're, this is just saying that this random measure converges to some random measure, which depends on the stable tree. So, and what is B, uh, BN? BN, B, BN is, is the normalizing sequence. It's always this. In, 
the same as the same as this one. But it depends on what? It depends on. It, it depends on gamma, or it depends on gamma. Yeah, it, it ah. it's mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and just uh, to show you how to to give you an idea of the proof. Uh, so we want to consider this. We want to study the asymptotics of this. Uh, we start by setting uh, Tn equals to the galton watson tree correctly normalized. And then we approximate our sum by some integral. And so this is, this is quite easy. Uh, and then uh, a bit more technical, it's to show that this quantity is con continuous with respect to the tree T, mm. right? So the function that maps uh, this measure to, uh, that maps this tree to this measure is continuous. And once this is done, uh, you just simply apply the, the continuous mapping theorem and together with the scaling uh, limit uh, result that I just showed you, and you get, you get uh, convergence for uh, these functionals. Okay. So again, once you have uh, the scaling limit, uh, you just show the continuity of, of this mapping and, and, uh, and uh, it, all, it all works. So uh, here, maybe uh, you, you could say that we didn't actually use uh, any proper, any real properties of galton watson trees, and you would be right. Uh, this actually works uh, uh, for any uh, sequence of random discrete trees. Uh, if they, um, so provided they uh, have a scaling limit to, some, to any random tree, and uh, they, uh, they, um, they satisfy this boundedness condition. Sorry, what are mu and lambda in the previous, and L in the previous formula of psi, there was integral. And in the integral, previous slide, yes? Integral of mu, F, L. What are mu oh, yeah. and L? I'm sorry, yeah, I, I forgot to, yeah. Uh, so uh, L is, uh, uh, is the length measure, which, Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a Lebesgue measure on the tree, and then mu is the. So if you if you rem if you remember uh, the trees we considered are uh, we consider are measured they they are they come equipped with a measure and this is it. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's just. Mu? I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back to to this uh, later on. Okay. Mu, mu, mu depends on what. Mu what is. is this uh, the object, uh, the, a random tree, uh, a tree, a real tree is a quadruplet. A quadruplet. You get a, a, a root, a measure mu, and a distance. So this is the measure mu associated, just associated with the, with the tree T. Mm, thank you. Okay. And again, I'll come back to this later on. So, uh, uh, so this works. Uh, once you have, you just need to have a scaling, a scaling limit and some moment condition, some, bound, some boundedness condition of the height. And in this case, you, you still have the same kind of convergence in distribution. And uh, for example, you can apply this uh, for uh, uniform polya trees. Um, so uh, as an example, uh, the total path uh, properly normalized converges to uh, the average height over the levy over the stable tree. Uh, this result was already is already known in the Brownian case, in which case the limiting random variable is just a nary distribution up to up to a constant. Sorry, what is Poya tree? Was it mentioned Poya tree? What is Poya tree? Before uh, it was just uh, one slide before. This uh, is Poya trees. What is it? It's it's not it's not that important. It's just another another model of of, ah, uh, okay. of trees. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. So I already gave maybe one representation of uh, of this measure psi, uh, but here's another one. Uh, 
you you pick a, a, a node x or a leaf x according to the measure mu, and then you integrate uh, between zero and h and the height of x. Uh, this quantity right here, where t r x is the subtree uh, above level r, which contains x. Okay. So you take a, a, a leaf X, uh, you look at the subtree, you look at level R and you look at the subtree, you take the subtree uh, starting at this level, which contains X and this is TRX. So uh, you get this uh, representation of this, of the measure Psi. Uh, so for the moment, we just, uh, we just showed convergence for nice enough functions, but we already know in the um, in the finite variance case that we can do a lot uh, a lot better. Uh, so now we restrict our attention to just uh, polynomial functions of the size and height. So functions of this type, tall functions of this type, and we assume the usual conditions, and uh, we have. Uh, we finally have our, like our main result, our, our phase transition, and it states the following. Uh, uh, we distinguish two regimes, either alpha and beta are large enough in the sense that gamma alpha plus gamma minus one beta is greater than one. And then we have the, con in, that, in that case, we have convergence and distribution of this additive functional properly normalized to uh, some limiting random variable in distribution and in mean also. And in the second case, if alpha and beta are small in, in, this, in this sense, if this condition is, is satisfied, then the same quantity, exactly the same quantity will uh, explode, right? It goes uh, to infinity in distribution. Sorry, the measure mu in the previous slide, it was a measure on vertices of the tree? On the, on the tree, yes? Mu. Yes. Uh-huh. It was defined uh, by what? It was defined by what? It's, it's the measure that comes with the tree. Mm -hmm. uh, in the construction of the tree, yes? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. thank you. Um, okay, uh, so we have this result and uh, yeah, and z, uh, the limit z alpha and beta uh, is given by these two, these two formulas. Either we integrate with respect to the length measure of, uh, so maybe I forgot to say, this is the mass of the subtree rooted uh, above a vertex y to the power alpha times the height to the power beta. And also the second representation where we integrate with respect to mu. Uh, so if you if you if you notice uh, this result uh, states that there's a phase transition happening at gamma alpha plus gamma minus one beta equals one, uh, and uh, so yeah, and here we we uh, in the last result we have taken right we were looking at uh, the size and the height. Now, if we take beta equals zero, we get only the size. And so we should be able to recover the results. So in fact, yeah, for beta equals zero, um, we get that there's a phase transition at alpha equals one over gamma. This was already known in the Brownian case, but not known in the, in the, in the general stable case. So uh, we, we proved this conjecture. And uh, let me go back a second. Uh, here we are summing over uh, internal vertices, and this is for a very simple reason. It's that if W is a leaf, uh, the tree uh, above the subtree above W is just reduced to to one vertex, so its height is zero, and then we cannot take uh, negative uh, exponents here, negative values for beta. So this comment is just to say that okay, if beta is uh, is non-negative, then we can uh, put back the leaves and it doesn't change the, the behavior of, uh, of our additive functionals. And one final remark is that um, 
Uh, here I gave you the result uh, when uh, for uh, polynomial functions of both the height and the size. But in fact, we have a more general result, result where uh, one of the functions can be general. It doesn't have to be a, a power function. But it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot harder to, it's a, it's a bit harder to state. Uh, so maybe uh, quick, very quickly, uh, how do we get from continuous functions to, to functions that may blow up, for example, negative powers? Uh, the idea is to work in a, in, a, in a proper space of measures and to prove some tightness result. So this is the type of result uh, of, uh, yeah, of arguments that we use is that if you have a sequence of random measures which converges in distribution to some random measure of psi. So here convergence and convergence and distribution means when testing against continuous and bounded functions, and we want to test against functions that are no longer bounded. Right? They, they can explode at, at one point. So how to do this? You need some, some boundedness condition in L1. And this, is, uh, this corresponds to tightness in, a, in, a, in, a, in some space of measures. And once you have this, you can conclude that uh, there is convergence and distribution for all epsilon uh, less than epsilon zero. So in, in, in our case, uh, we just need to prove uh, this boundedness in L1 condition. I'm not gonna explain all the terms, but uh, once, once we have this, the proof is, is done. Right? So uh, just to, a quick recap, how, how did we prove our main result? We just proved that some functional is continuous and applied the continuous mapping theorem. And then we proved that, we proved that it's tight in, in a, in, a, in, the, in a proper space of measures by uh, doing an L1 estimate, a moment estimate. And then we're, we, we are finished. Um, so let me uh, do a quick recap of the finite variance case where a lot is known. So just for, for now, we assume that psi is critical and has finite variance. So all the previous results apply, and we are looking at the asymptotic behavior of this quantity. So the the global regime, the one that uh, that I just showed you, corresponds to to the first point. Uh, two alpha plus beta is greater than one, and then we have a scaling a scaling limit, which is z of alpha and beta, and it's a functional of the Brownian tree or equivalently of the Brownian excursion. And the normalization is given by this factor. Uh, so this is the global regime. And, uh, and basically what, what happens is that the tall function is large enough so that the main contribution to this sum comes from large subtrees. Uh, so these large subtrees uh, are not independent and uh, they, so the global shape of the tree plays a role and the scaling limit uh, like appears at the limit. In the second regime uh, called the local regime, the opposite happens. So the tall function is small in this sense, right? And so the main contribution comes from small subtrees. So we're close to the, to the leaves. Uh, and these are basically independent between them. And so we get a central limit theorem at the, at the normal speed uh, of square root on square root of n. And finally, there's a, an intermediate regime uh, which uh, for two alpha plus beta lying between zero and one. And this is um, only known for beta equals zero. So functions of the size and otherwise not, uh, not a lot is known in the general case. Um, so uh, we also looked at the, the limiting random variable and we, uh, uh, we wanted to say what, what we can say about it. Well, we wanted to see what we can say about it. Uh, so we can compute its first moment. Um, it's, given, it's given in terms of uh, um, the moments of the height of the stable tree 
which are only explicit in some very specific cases. And in, uh, specifically in the Brownian case, so the, in the Brownian case, uh, we have the Brownian tree right here, and its height is ju just corresponds to uh, the maximum of the Brownian excursion. And this is a well-known distribution, and in particular, its moments are explicit. And uh, in this case, we have this formula right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and uh, more generally, uh, we have we can compute the intensity measure of uh, psi. For, for the stable tree, uh, it's given by this formula. Um, so uh, this, this was for the first moment, but um, in the Brownian case, you can say uh, more. Uh, and for, for functionals of the size, so beta is equal to zero. Uh, you have a, uh, there's a recursive formula for all the moments, all the higher moments. And this was given by Phil and Janssen. And uh, we can also, uh, yeah, study the finiteness of, uh, of uh, this family of random variables. And we distinguish, uh, so just like the convergence result, we have two regimes. Uh, with the same condition, no? uh, either uh, gamma alpha plus gamma minus one beta is greater than one, in which case our limiting uh, this random variable is finite, almost surely, or uh, this is not the case, and the random variable is infinite, almost surely. So once again, there's a phase transition uh, happening at, uh, at this value, uh, which actually explains uh, why there's a phase transition for uh, for the Bianimi Galton Watson trees, um, and also uh, an interesting phenomenon happens, which is uh, there's a compensation between uh, the size and the height, meaning that if you have you you can take a very neg uh, a negative value of alpha, a very small, a very large negative value of alpha, provided that beta is large enough so that this condition is met, and then the random variable will be uh, will, will be finite, and uh, the coefficients uh, of this uh, of this linear uh, combination uh, can be intuitively explained by the fact that uh, under okay, so this uh, this might not be very clear, but under the excursion measure. Uh, n, uh, the height of the of the Levy tree behaves as its mass to some power. So you can say that z of alpha and beta is finite if and only if the same quantity is finite where we replace uh, the height by the mass to the proper power to the, with the correct normalization. And then what, what appears here is uh, so if you multiply this exponent by uh, by uh, by gamma, you get the same. You get this uh, this term, right? So this explains why uh, this condition appears. It doesn't explain the one, but it, it explains why we have this uh, these coefficients, at least intuitively. Uh, so let me see how much time is left. Okay, so maybe just. Uh, um, one final thing that we looked at uh, is the asymptotic behavior of z of alpha and beta uh, when uh, alpha and beta go to infinity. And uh, so we distinguish uh, two, uh, two possibilities, two regimes. In the first one, uh, the, so if, if, you rec uh, if you remember, alpha is the, the power, the exponent of the size, and beta is the exponent of the height. So in the first regime, the, uh, the size dominates in the sense that uh, beta over uh, this power of alpha goes to a constant. And in this case, uh, z alpha and beta correctly normalized converges to uh, an integral of uh, uh, of some of some exponential of the subordinator and the height of the of the total tree. These are independent, and the subordinator is stable with, the, with this Laplace exponent. 
so the sub, uh, the appearance of the subordinator is related to the fact that the size dominates, and in the second regime, it's the height that dominates. So in this sense, in the sense that beta dominates alpha uh, alpha to this power, and in that case, uh, we have uh, convergence of the alpha beta with a different normalization uh, to just the height. So there is no longer a subordinator at the limit. Um, so I think I, I will stop here. Uh, thank you so much for, for your attention. Thank you for your talk. Um, okay, so uh, let's first thank uh, Michel for his talk. Uh, shall we just unmute ourselves and uh, give him uh, some applause? Sorry, can't you uh, <laughs> explain once more where the measure mu appear, appears uh, in the construction of the tree? It's uh, okay. Let me go back. It's just in my in in my definition of a real tree. There's a there's yeah. always a measure mu, right? Right. Here. And how it appears in the construction of the tree? What, what do you mean? How uh, we only look at uh, measured metric spaces, so it sure. it just it just comes with the tree, and in in our in this specific case where where we are looking at the Brownian tree or more generally the sure. stable tree, it's a natural measure that comes from the right. Yeah. It's just the push forward of the Lebesgue measure, and it's a natural object that comes with with the tree. If you consider finite tree, it's finite n. Uh, how it's connected with measure mu? Is your limit theorems that I'm uh, telling about n tends to infinity, but for finite n, what is mu? For fi uh, we take the just the counting, uh, well, uh, the, the uniform measure on the vertices. This is the equivalent. So okay. for, for, uh, I said for, uh, for, um, for the Brownian tree, the measure mu is corresponds to uh, taking a leaf uniformly at random. So it's a uniform measure on the set of leaves. And, and for, and for uh, not brown, yeah, not brown. Yeah, for... yeah and, and so the equivalent for the, and this is the, the equivalent for the discrete tree is just uh, taking the, the, the uniform measure over the vertices. No, no, for Levy tree, what is mu? It's the same brown, thing. Yeah, okay, but... You have some general construction with the it's, where mu is yeah. the construction. It, it's the same thing again because by construct it's constructed uh, in the construction I showed you. It's yeah, it's like this, right? It's using coding the coding by via excursions, and then you get a natural measure which is the push forward of the Lebesgue measure. So it's always this. It is the, the limit of it is the image of a Lebesgue measure. Yes. Yes. Under this projection, I'm sorry. The projection of the yeah, yeah, mm. with this with this projection, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm. <laughs> so I guess the question has already started. It's for the, but you, you take uh, uh, this projection to obtain the uh, the tree uh, for Brownian for Brownian uh, tree. You consider G as a Brown excursion, yes? Yes. And for the V3, you have take to G, what G? Uh, yeah, this is a bit more, a lot more complicated actually. And it's, uh, oh. it's this so-called, it's what's, what's called the height function, uh, the height process, uh, which is uh, some, local, uh, some local time functional of, of a Levy process. But oh. no, I don't want to get into the details. Okay, okay. So uh -huh. you should, okay, thank you. you mm -hmm. can check okay. out the book by uh, Le Gall and Juken for more details. All right, I see. Andre, you got your hands up. Thank you. Just one short question. It was a great presentation. On your slide of the finite variance case, you had this third case, which was indeterminate. Could you maybe explain this in more detail? What, is, what are the issues here? Um, well, the, uh, for, at least for beta equals zero, the, the issue is that um, it's just that um, um, actually, 
uh, you need to recenter the random variables before you, uh, you take the limit, right? So the, the, the expectation is no longer negligible. What, what, what's, what was going on in this case, in the global, in the global case, is that uh, the expectation was negligible in front of the normalizing factor, right? We, we don't need to recenter here uh, to get a limit, okay? But yes. in the in this case, uh, you need to you need to recenter first, uh, and uh, what so what uh, Phil and Jensen showed in this case is that after recentering, uh, you have a convergence with the same um, with the same uh, speed with the same normalizing factor, uh, but the limit uh, cannot. Okay, is not explicitly expressed in terms of the of the of the Brownian uh, excursion. So the the connection with the Brownian excursion is is not clear yet. So, so this is an open okay. this is an open question. question, right? How to is there is there a, an explicit expression in terms of the of the Brownian excursion? It's not clear. Yeah. Uh, and the problem is. Um, uh, why this isn't uh, straightforward is that, uh, as as we show, as I showed, um, the limiting the the candidate limit yes. is actually infinite, right? So you need to do some something at the limit to 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 make sense of it, right? But in terms of the uh, expression for the scaling limit, it's the same, right? What do you mean? this expression that you have gamma times uh, alpha plus gamma minus one times beta, it's uh, equals one. This is this holds for the, the same also in the third case. Uh, uh, wait, uh, can you repeat one? Uh, no, I, just, I, sure. I mean, it's just a uh, uh, vague thought, but the expression for the, this expression that you have here, uh, gamma times alpha plus gamma minus one times beta, it's the same, equals one. Also, in this third case, but it changes. And this is the thing: in the third case, we are in this regime, right? In the second okay. one, okay. Where yes. this random, where the candidate random variable is infinite, so mm -hmm. you need to recenter at the the Galton and in the discrete case, and mm -hmm. also at the limit. Like there is some some okay. operation to be done before before you make sense of it, and it's okay. not clear how to do that. Okay. I hope that I hope that answers your question. Yes. 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 Thank you. Thanks. So just, uh, sorry. just to okay. Oh, sorry, if I understand you understand you correctly, the measure mu depend on gamma, yes? Depend yeah. Depend on the yeah, it it, dep it, dep it depends on the tree, yes. So it depends on gamma in that sense. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And only <laughs> only on gamma. Uh no, it's a lot more. No. Not? Well, <coughs> but, but how to define this measure for the limit of the trees? Uh, um, well, you need, you need a, a, a levy stable process. I think that's what Michelle means. So you, given a gamma, you need uh, a gamma stable levy process without positive jumps. And from there, uh, the stable tree is just a function of the year. And, Together with the matcher, it's just a function of that process. Yeah. Sorry, I don't understand how to define the measure mu. If you have a sequence of trees uh, with given gamma, how to define measure mu? It's not defined by taking a limit. It's, you can define it directly for the limiting object. You can define it directly for the stable tree. You just say, okay, I code, I code, I'm coding the stable tree with uh, with this high process. And once I do this, I have a natural measure, which is just the push forward by the Lebesgue measure. A stable tree is defined only by gamma. If you have gamma, you have a stable tree, yes? Yes. So the measure mu depends only on gamma. If you, yeah, if you, yeah. Mm. Thank you. Uh, just, just a small question. So uh, regarding uh, the, this uh, two alpha plus beta, smaller than zero, the second case, so in that case, do you have that this uh, random variable you are converging is independent of uh, the tree itself? 
which so, so you were converging to a tree yes in in wait are, are you talking about this uh, this line? yes exactly so yeah. no the second in the second case yeah so in, the, in the first case in a way uh, you you your m alpha beta was uh, finite no so this this was co correct this was okay i, I am I, I didn't understand. So, so sorry. So you have this. Uh, so so in a way, yes. Yeah, so so in the first case, you you see alpha beta. It's already defined. It's 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 a functional of your uh, of your ex excursion, no? Yeah. So what? Uh, so in the second case, uh, uh, then you recenter and you rescale. Mm -hmm. My intuition is that you get something that is not. A function of your excursion, so in fact, it is independent of your excursion. I, Am I yeah, right? I, I, well, it's not. Yeah. So this is not the regime uh, we studied, but yeah, I, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that it, yeah, it doesn't have to do with uh, with uh, with the excursion itself. It's just a normal random variable. Yes, but it's independent. So, so the the, the question is like, is it is completely independent of the excursion? So I, the same for for the. I'm not 100% sure on this. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Okay, if not, so let's thank uh, all the speakers today. Okay, so we're right on time. Thank you, everyone. Uh, so we'll see you in two weeks' time.